Welcome to First Lines Examples for Writers, my first time to do this and my November 2020 edition. I'm going to take the work of different writers and show you first lines that they used to try and get your attention, maybe inspire you as a writer. First up, we've got the Rogues short story collection put together by George R. R. Martin and the introduction that he wrote. Everybody loves a rogue, though sometimes we live to regret it. Here you get a nice first line with a twist and something for you to think about along the way as you read. Patrick Rothfuss has a short story in the collection called The Lightning Tree, which has the main character of Bast. First line. Bast almost made it out the back door of the Waystone Inn. He actually had made it outside. Both feet were over the threshold, and the door was almost entirely eased shut behind him before he heard his master's voice. There, you have more lines that add to it. The Hangman's Daughter, the beginning of a series by Oliver Pooch. In the prologue, it starts, October 12 was a good day for a killing. That line right there hooks me. I want to read the book. I like the author. I like the way that the words are presented on the page. And then chapter one establishes the character and some imagery with the situation. Magdalena was sitting on a wooden bench in front of the small squat hangman's house, pressing the heavy bronze mortar tightly between her thighs. The Dark Monk is the second book in the series, which I also presented in my videos this month. The prologue tells us, when the parish priest Andreas Kottmeyer pressed the last stone into place and sealed the opening with lime and mortar, he had just four hours to live. When I read that, I wanted to know why. I wanted to know what was going on, so it was very effective. Chapter one, Simon trudged down Altenstadt Street through the snow, cursing his vocation. And then it goes in the different careers in town, but it establishes the character. V for Vendetta by Alan Moore and David Lloyd. That cover contrasts the old candle holder with the mirror with the bright lights. It's got the wig and the mask. The first line of the graphic novel is a radio broadcast Good evening, London. It establishes the date and time and starts giving you information about the setting and background. After those works, I started my non-fiction November spree. Even though these works are non-fiction, they pack a punch at the beginning. Eric Larson's The Devil in the White City has some of the best first lines ever. In Chicago at the end of the 19th century, amid the smoke and industry and the clatter of trains, there lived two men, both handsome, both blue-eyed, and both unusually adept at their chosen skills. Doesn't that make you want to know about them? Make no little plans, they have no magic to stir men's blood. And I was born with the devil in me. I could not help the fact that I was a murderer, no more than the poet can help the inspiration to sing. The Architect's first chapter starts out, the date was April 14, 1912, a sinister day in maritime history. But of course the man in suite 63 to 65, Shelter Deck C, did not yet know it. Makes you wanna know what he didn't know. The Serial Killer's first chapter, how easy it was to disappear. Oh, chilling, because you know it's a serial killer, and he's gonna make people disappear. Furious Hours by Casey Sepp, the story of an alleged murderer, an attorney, and Harper Lee, the famous writer of To Kill a Mockingbird. The prologue. Nobody recognized her. Harper Lee was well known, but not by sight. And if she hadn't introduced herself, it's unlikely that anyone in the courtroom would have figured out who she was. I like the book starts with the most famous character. And then chapter one, enough water, like enough time, can make anything disappear. That line's really similar to the one in The Devil in the White City, but I like it. 
I could get that same line several times and I would still like the disappear idea. Maya Angelou's I Know Why the Caged Bird Sing starts with her as a child trying to recite poetry. What you looking at me for? I didn't come to stay. I hadn't so much forgot as I couldn't bring myself to remember. Other things were more important. What were you looking at me for? I didn't come to stay. Then we've got the Sai Jones memoir, How We Fight for Our Lives. This one starts talking about Louisville, Texas, May 1998. The waxy-faced weatherman on Channel 8 said we had been above 90 degrees for 10 days in a row. Nice alliteration with waxy-faced weatherman, nice flow to it, and speaking some truths about Texas and the heat. I Am Malala gives us the memoir and true story of this girl growing up. Prologue. When I close my eyes, I can see my bedroom. The bed is unmade, my fluffy blanket in a heap, because I've rushed out for school late for an exam. It's a nice way to establish information about the character. And it continues in chapter one. I am Malala, a girl like any other, although I do have my special talents. And she gets really playful here as she talks about those talents and her likes and dislikes. Change the world, change your life from Angela Perky. She is also telling personal stories, establishing her own credibility, her ethos. It was 2002, the summer after my freshman year of high school, and I was sitting in a nursing home painting the fingernails of yet another old lady. A touching, simple story. But it's inspiring, just like the next book, Start Something That Matters, by Blake Mykoski. He's going to give you his personal story in his first lines. In April 2006, I took some time off from work to travel to Argentina. I was 29 years old and involved in my fourth entrepreneurial startup, an online driver education program for teens, and it continues there. How to be an anti-racist from Ibram X. Kennedy, a controversial work dealing with racism in society. My racist introduction. I despised suits and ties. For 17 years, I'd been surrounded by suit-wearing, tie-choking, hat-flying church folk. My teenage wardrobe hollered the defiance of a preacher's kid. You get to know him a little bit. And then in chapter one, he's got the definitions that contrast. And he does that from chapter to chapter. The racist and anti-racist concepts. He teamed up with Jason Reynolds for a remix of the book Stamped, which was sold out this summer. Hard to get a copy of for a little while. Chapter 1, just the title catches my attention. The story of the world's first racist. Makes you want to know who in the world he's talking about. Before we begin, let's get something straight. This is not a history book. I repeat, this is not a history book. Emily Colas is going to finish us out with the book Just Checking Her True Life Stories About Being Obsessive Compulsive. Stars. I like to make stars in my head or trace them with my finger, just like you doodle with a pencil on the side of a piece of paper. Someone will be talking to me and I look like I'm listening. Really, all I'm doing is drawing one line of the star for every word that person says. It really gives you insight into her life as a true person with obsessive compulsive disorder. Well, that's it for today, but I say every day is a good day for a book talk, so keep joining me in the future. Peace.